tell um, people that meet me in person or those that communicate with me on my social media sites, which will be down below right here, and make sure you're a part of that group, is that beyond YouTube, um, because I'm still in the process of growing, thanks to you guys, my day job is a registrar. And what a registrar is, is someone that you know, works at a, well, necessarily does not have to be at a school, um, because you have registrars that might work at a hospital um, or any type of company that keeps large databases of records or information. But I work at an elementary school um, right here in good old Macon, Georgia. So as a registrar, my main and primary job is I take care of the registration, hint, hint, registrar. I take care of the registration for the school. My school's um, enrollment consists of pre-K through fifth grade. Luckily here in my district, um, they have it that with the pre-K, um, it's like a separate entity, meaning that someone else deals with their registration, but I might handle the copying or the scanning um, of that child's records and then I place it in the system under their name. So, once again, like I said, I do registration, but please, please don't be fooled. That's not all of what my job is entailed. That's just the main hub of my job, but that's not all that I do. I do much, 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 much more than just doing registration all day. Um, my main purpose, like I said, when I started to think about what type of videos to do, is that back to school time is here. We're here in July. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but my school, um, the school year will start August the 1st. And that's not long off. That's a couple weeks. I myself start back to work on Monday. So all of this is what I'm telling you will happen for me next week <laughs> on Monday. I will be back in the trenches of work. So my main thing uh, is that I want parents. If you are a parent that has a student that is coming to a school, there are some things that you need to know. A lot of times parents think that we're giving them a hard time when they uh, come up to the school and they're ready to sign their student up for school, but that's not the case. We're just following every protocol that is set by someone over us. And that someone over us is not just including our principal or our assistant principal, that is including the person that is in charge of the entire school district, which is the school superintendent. And you have to place yourself in that person's shoes. If they sit here and look out for you and do something that they're not supposed to be doing to help you out versus anybody else, they can lose their job. And at the end of the day, you're not going to take care of that person's bills or that family or anything of that nature. So you must put yourself in that person's shoes before you sit here and make the person risk their job. And that's something that I have had to deal with the entire time during my job is that I have people that I am friendly with um, outside of work and I have parents that I do build relationships with. And the first thing they will say is, Miss Roy, you can't hook me up. You can't. No, boo, I can't because I have a child. I need this job, okay? It might not be much to you, but I need all these ducats I'm going to collect, okay? I need this. So, you you have to definitely stay focused on what you're trying to do and knowing that, yeah, you're here to help everybody that walks to their front door, but you first and foremost have to stick with what has been said in front of you and do what you are being told to do. And the basic thing is communication. You have to have good communication skills. Um... Luckily with me, I'm a talker. I love to talk. And I try to place myself in that person's shoes. So if it is a parent that doesn't have what they need, of course I'm not going to um, try to jump anything to allow them to do it, even though they're not supposed to. But I will give them suggestions. Um, and I'll go into that later on, on what that can entail. But first thing first, when you do come into your child's school, it is important that you get a clear understanding of what's needed before you come. It'll make the process easier. Uh, I'm not saying that you have to um, call before you go, but it will help you out a lot. You won't have to keep running back and forth collecting items, and uh, it'll make the job so much easier for that registrar. So, let's say it's time for your child to go to kindergarten. So your child has never been in that school system before as a student. So, if your child is a brand new spanking student, that um, has never been enrolled in the school, there are some items that you're gonna be needing. First thing first, you're going to need your identification card. Your identification card can be a um, state-issued ID, 
or it could be your state issued driver's license. And please make sure that your ID and driver's license are up to date because just because you have it, we have to check the date because you could have an ID card or um, a driver's license and it's expired. We can get in trouble for that. It needs to be in date. So please make sure you check your dates on your state ID or either your um, driver's license. Second, I would need your child's birth certificate. When I get that birth certificate, it would be great to have the original, but if not, it needs to be a copy that is clear with no blemishes, no burns, no tears, no food stains. That would be great because I have to read this. And I don't know about other school systems, but I know a lot of the school systems are beginning to go electronic, meaning this is going to be scanned into a system. So when I click on your child's name, boom, everything that I took during registration has popped up. So it's very vital that you give me something that is understandable, legible, and neat. <sighs> Next, I will need your child's immunization. Immunizations are basically your child's shot records. And I have a lot of parents come and say, well, I ain't got no shot record. Well, sweetheart, how come your child doesn't have any shots? That's what I really want to say. Your child's walking around this world full of disease and everything else. And you ain't got no shots? What do they do to that? So it's very important that, like I did with Brianna today, Brianna had a dentist appointment today. And as a parent, what I try to do is, because I work for the school system, I have to pretty much jam pack all of my summer with things that I need to do that are concerning her health-wise. So today she went to her dentist. Now, um, next week she'll be going to her regular doctor. And this is to get all these checkups done because you never know what's going to be needed for that new school year. And plus, it's just something that you want to do for your child to make sure they have a clear good new start for that new year everything's been handled so you need to make sure that you have your child's current immunization form you can get that from either your local um public health record which would be like the health department or you can also get it from your child's doctor they have a system called grits that we use here in the school system that allows us to look up the immunization of course, we can look it up for you, but I'm to this point, you're a parent, just as I am. And when I get my child's documents from her doctor or whomever for something that is going to be needed for registration, whether it's for school or sports, I keep a folder. And I feel like it is the responsibility of the parent to keep these things. It's your child. Because when income tax comes around, you are more than willing to get all this stuff ready to get that money. So you need to keep that in consideration. You need to make sure you have all your items neatly stacked, um, stapled, paper clip, whatever. You need to have all your stuff situated because it's not my child. I'm signing up. It's your child. Next, I will be needing, um, let's see, birth certificate we covered, ID we have covered, immunization. I will also need a current lease or mortgage. And when I say current, I mean within that year. Preferably within the last six months. I You cannot tell, and it, this is what burns me when it comes to my parents. You cannot tell me that here you are to sign your child up for uh, my school. You ain't got a lease. So you stay where you stand on no lease. A current lease within the last six months. Do not come in that school with a lease that is a year or so off. Anything could change in a year. Anything could change in a year. You need a current lease within the last six months. And um, to alert some of those parents out there, some registrars are now going and actually verifying. We can actually call those leasing offices and verify that you are actually staying at that address. Because within different zones we do have a lot of zone hoppers and what i mean by that is that they start at registration with one address and end up moving within the school year and not taking that child out you, that's not right you're taking the spot of a child that's actually in zone and really makes it easier for you transportation wise next you would need a utility bill utility bill would consist of it can be um any service pretty much any service that goes from one part or one place to that house that is within zone georgia power or any other power source just it needs to be a valid piece of document that shows you are getting a utility service for that residence don't come in there and your name is boo boo kitty and you come in there with a um, piece of document 
Um, that is a utility bill, but it's for, you know, it's in your child's name. That's not going to work. It needs to be in the person's name that is doing the registration and whose name is on that lease. Very important. My main thing at, and the next thing, if I cut my own stuff off, eye, ear, and dental. Ear, eye, dental. And here in Georgia, it's a Georgia form 3300. That needs to be completed and I'll sew up today. And you get that from your child's doctor. All you have to do with that is say I need the form for school. They kind of already know what you're talking about. The main thing with being a registrar is um, I got cussed out a lot last year. Because a lot of parents thought it was just me getting an attitude. And it wasn't me getting an attitude. I have to, when I create this child's record in the system, I have to know all this stuff to put in the system. Or either when it comes to... Uh, it's an important time of the year we call it FTE. When it comes to that time, I won't have what I need. And that ball will be in my court. I'll get in trouble because you didn't have what you needed. And it, it definitely comes to accountability. It's hard doing this job because I'm dealing with so many different areas of confidentiality. But as long as you have a parent that's going to give you what you need and as long as you have the mindset to do what needs to be done, you should be fine. Uh, most importantly is come in that school with a great attitude. Don't come to school already on a negative um, type of flow. You're already saying negative things about the school. You need to give that school an opportunity to show you what they have. And a lot of times parents get upset about the school, but have you checked yourself as well as your child? It's almost so much a teacher or a principal or another school official can do. Um, they, they cannot force your child to learn. If your child in a classroom does not want to sit down or anything like that, that's not the teacher's fault. The teacher can only do so much. Um, this is the day and age. I mean, we're not going to put our hands on your child because we don't want to go to jail and we ain't got time for um, Billy Sue and Silly Sue to say that my teacher did so and so. So, no, you need to make sure you have that communication with your child before they walk in those schools, school doors that first day of school. Give them the clear purpose and focus of why they're going to school. And you might need to do that the whole year long because we just we don't have time for it. We're here to educate. We're here to motivate your kids and to get them out the door to the next level of education, which is middle school for me. So we, we just don't have time for that. Uh, a lot of parents um, are still in a child's mindset. I mean they could really care less and that's sad it's a drop off point and that's it but it, it definitely takes a mesh of the school and the parent to make a cohesive um being to me it takes both people both sets both entities to make this child who they need to be to the next level so once again the items needed i will place below make sure if i have items that you think um are left off just call your child's school or call your child's local school system. Depending on the school system, the um, clerk or registrar might not be there yet. So you can get all the information from your um, local board of education. But like I said, most importantly, just go in and start off the school year with a positive attitude. And I hope and pray that everything goes your way and your child's way for this new school year, 2017-2018. And I hope that this video has been more than helpful to you. Once again, if you got any questions, hit me up on all my social media. And also, you can hit me up on my email if you have questions and you're local to Bibb County. I'd be more than happy to either lead you the right way or lead you to the right registrar for that individual school. And once again, thank you so much for your support. Support. Make sure that before you um, get off of this video or in this video, you go subscribe and become a part of the Alicia TV family. I love you guys. I hope that God continues to bless you and yours. Peace.